Hey guys, today we're going to prove the Cauchy Schwartz inequality using uh, the inner product and its axioms. So the Cauchy Schwartz inequality states for any v and w within the complex numbers, show that v inner product w squared is less than or equal to v inner, with the inner product of itself and w the inner product of itself. So the way that you start off with a Cauchy-Schwarz inequality proof is you always got to start off with case one. Case one is the case where v or w is zero. Case one. Uh, we could just say v yeah, equals zero. Set v equal to zero. It's a pretty trivial uh, proof here, but it has to be done for completeness. So from here you see 0, w, 0, 0, and then from here we can use our inner product axioms to show that this is clearly 0, and this is clearly 0, and case 1 is done. The trivial case is done. So now let's move on to the next non-trivial case, case 2 where v and w do not equal zero. So here you gotta use a little trick to start off in the, at least I'm at least I'm gonna use a little trick. There's multiple other proofs of this inequality but I'm gonna use a little trick to, sh to start off. Uh, inner product axiom number four here states that a product, an inner product with itself is, non, is a non-negative real number. So from there, we can show that we can take any uh, vector with itself and we get a non-negative real number. So I'm going to choose a particular vector that will help us with this, uh, with this inequality. Let's choose wt plus v inner product with itself, where let t exist over the complex numbers. So now what we know from this is that wt plus v with itself is greater than or equal to zero. It has to be based on the inner product axiom. And then based on inner product axiom number three, number two, and no, we'll start with number two. With the based on inner product axiom number two here, this multiplies out to be W uh, T W T plus W T V plus W or V cross wt plus vv. And this is all greater than or equal to zero. So from here we see that this can be simplified into zero is less than or equal to the v squared, which is this guy here, plus t squared w squared, which is this guy here, plus we have t t star well star here uh, refers to the conjugate t star uh, this should be w v, because we're pulling it out of here, which is why we have the star there, based on inner product axioms. However, I'm going to switch this around. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do two steps here in one. So now this is going to be v, w, and this whole thing here is starred. See what we did there was we used complex, or we used inner product axiom one here to flip the version, 
and we use the, the inner product uh, axioms to take out the T, which is <coughs> going to be complex conjugated. So the whole thing is complex conjugated, which is what we want. And then we still have another term here, which is T V W. Okay, so now collect in some terms here and to simplify and further we have 0 is less than or equal to v squared plus t squared plus w squared and then these two terms combine so that you get the real part or two times the real part of T V W. The reason why you get the real part and not the entire complex part, the real and the imaginary part, is because what you're doing here is you're taking two parts and adding them together. You're taking the complete complex conjugate of one part and then you're adding it to the non-complex conjugate of it itself. If you think about it, What's going to happen when you do that is the imaginary part is going to be subtracted from itself, while the while the real part will just be times two. So that's why we're we're allowed to make that switch there. So now we're going to use another trick here, which is quite tricky, to say the least. We're going to switch to polar form, and we're going to substitute some val some variables. So we're going to say polar form. We're going to say we're going to switch t is equal to r e i of theta. Since t initially was just some complex number, it can obviously be rep represented in, in polar form as r e t i theta. We're also going to, we also, or at least we also know that v with inner product with w is also a complex number, so we're going to say that that's some s e to the i theta 2. And here we know that R and S are strictly greater or equal to zero. And we also know that S and theta two are fixed. They can't be changed. This is due to our given properties up above here. So now what we have here is that we have the real part of T V inner product W is actually equal to R S cosine of theta plus theta two. We get to this this cosine here by the representation of E to the I theta. We recall that e to the i theta is equal to cosine of x, or cosine of theta, I'm sorry, plus i sine of theta. When you take the real part of it, you're eliminating this part. So that's where the cosine comes from. So now we just have our s cosine of theta plus theta 2 as the real part. So therefore, we have in total, we have R2 W2 plus 2 times R S cosine of theta plus theta 2 plus V2 and all this is greater than or equal to 0. So now we're going to use our third trick of the proof which is we're going to replace, replace theta 1, or theta, with theta plus pi. We can do this because as we stated, theta 2 and s are fixed. r and theta are free to choose. So we're just going to choose theta to be theta plus pi. Here, this switches the uh, statement above here. What happens is it becomes cosine theta plus pi plus theta 2. We know that a trig identity here is that cosine plus or theta plus pi is actually negative cosine plus theta. So we can rewrite this as 
Oops. There we go. Minus two R S cosine of theta plus theta two plus B squared greater than zero. Okay. So now this is an exact form with what we want. We want a quadratic equation form. We have it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the discriminant. Okay, so then the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac is less than or equal to 0. So we see b squared is 4r squared s squared. Oops, made a mistake. R is, r is the variable that we're... Uh, using the quadratic on. So 4s squared cosine squared theta plus theta 2 minus 4w squared b squared is less than or equal to 0. We switch that over there, we divide by 4 on both sides, and we're left with s squared cosine squared of theta plus theta 2 is less than or equal to w squared and v squared. So particularly when theta plus theta 2 is equal to 0, we know that cosine of 0 is 1, so when we can just choose theta so that it complements theta 2 to be 90 degrees, and so we get 1 as the cosine argument. So then we have s squared is less than or equal to w squared v squared. Now if we uh, plug back in our terms, or, or what s was, s was v w, so we have v w and squared is less than or equal to, well, that's just w, w, and v, v which is what we set out to prove. So here we use the general quadratic form, which is very common to use in the cauchy sports uh, inequality proof, but we used it for complex numbers on the inter across the inner product. You definitely had to use some tricks in this proof, switching to polar form, knowing to use a, a theta here, so that theta plus theta 2 is equal to 90 degrees. There, that was a trick. But overall, it's a, it's a beautiful proof, and it works now. It's a very general proof. It works in complex numbers as well as real numbers. So thanks for checking it out. Hope you learned something.